Mr. Wright, who's calling? Just a moment, please. Mr. Wright, from your printing on the line. Tower's model agency. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm sorry Mr. Fitzgerald isn't in yet. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What do you want, please? I'd like to have a job. Are you registered here? Well, no, I'm not. I've never been... We're not registering any new girls. Tower's model agency. Good afternoon. You have the wrong number. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Good afternoon. Tower's model agency. Just a moment. Mr. Bright. Good afternoon. Tower's model agency. Tower's model agency. Here you are. Have a seat, please. Good afternoon. How can I have a job here to, to mother? Are you registered? Oh, yes, yes, I'm registered. Did you get a call from Mr. Wright's office? Well, no. Mr. Wright? Guess there's nothing for you, then. Sorry. I'm sorry, too. This is Mr. Wright's office. I came to see about being a mother. Did Mr. Wright call you? Oh, yes, yes, I got a call from Mr. Wright. Go right in. Thank you. I want him to put his okay on it before we print one of them. He's putting up all the money for this deal, and he has a right to know what's going on. Now, don't argue with me. Send the proofs in right away. Uh, I'll be with you in a minute. Have me Mr. Trevor's address. Yes, sir. Did I call you? Oh, yes, yes, you called me. Uh, what was it for? Well, I don't know. To be a mother. Uh, you're French, huh? Yes, I'm French. But the accent won't show on the pictures. No, no, of course not. Let me see. Must have been this, uh... Yes, that's it. Now, this is where you go. Mr. Travers' address, sir. Thank you. This man is a first-class photographer. He'll pose with drapes. Pardon? With drapes. With... Oh, drapes. And what else? Nothing else. Hmm? Oh, you mean you, you want me to pose with... Just with... Yes. What do you think I am? I've never... You don't want to do it? Me? No, I'll never do it. All right. You, come in, please. Yes, Mr. Wright. I have a job for you to pose with drapes. For how much? Two seventy-five an hour. He'll want you three hours a day for about ten weeks. That's no job. That's a career. Oh, there's one thing I want to warn you about. He's a very impatient man. Don't keep him waiting, because he's likely to throw things at you. I'll be there on time. So make sure you are. Go right into his studio and get ready. Here's the address. His name is Karen Decker. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Here are the proofs for Mr. Trevor. Oh, yes. We'll send them right down to, uh, to... Bart, I asked you for Mr. Trevor's address a half hour ago. Where is it? Yes, Mr. Wright. I put it right here. Now, don't the... argue with but, me. But... Well, but I, I remember just everyone in this right. place wants to argue with me. Well, I'm so sorry, but I... Get me that address. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but, Mr. Wright... Get I, it. I just think... Right over there. Thank you very much. Going up. Mr. Trevor's office, please. See your secretary, please. This one? Yes, that one. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. I am to see Mr. James Trevor. Take this to the mailroom right away. Mr. Trevor wants it to get the three o'clock plane and have it registered. What do you want to see him about, please? I am from Towers. And oh, from like... Towers. He's expecting you. Go right in. Oh, yes. In here? Yes, right in that door. He'll be there in just a minute. Thank Make you. yourself comfortable. Yes, yes, of course. Right away. About 800,000 copies, and I don't want any argument about it. Jim, that'll stand us over a quarter of a million dollars before we even start. Listen your money, Ed, so will you be good boys and do as I tell you, please? Oh, who is it? Well, it's, it's, uh... Huh? You are Mr. James Trevor, no? I'm Mr. James Trevor, yes. How do you do? I'm sorry I'm not ready. I know you are very impatient. No, I'm just curious. Would you mind telling me what this is all about, or is that asking too much? Pardon? What is this all for? Two dollars and seventy-five cents an hour. Oh, 
for two seventy-five. You know. Is it too much? Oh no, no, no. As a matter of fact, it's quite reasonable. I was just thinking that it's worth that to find out what happens next. Oh, cannot get this. May I help you? Oh no, 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 please. I, I think I can do it myself. Here's your plane ticket, sir. Mr. Eddington will meet you in Chicago at 10 o'clock, and he wants you to bring... Oh, pardon me. I beg your pardon. Pardon me. You are the certain Mr. James Trevor, no? I am Mr. James Trevor, but not very certain. But don't let that stop you. Go right ahead. Don't bother about me. Hmm. Where are the drops? The what? You have the drops? Oh, I don't know. I've had the measles. What are the drops like? Where is your camera? My camera? Oh, my camera. Oh, that's a long, sad story. I lost it. You lost it? Mm -hmm. Lost it last winter in Florida. Put it in the back of my car and somebody stole it. It's the only camera I've ever been able to make pictures with. You're a photographer, no? That's where you got me. I'm a photographer, no. And what are you? I'm a model from Towers. You're a model from Towers? Well, what are you doing here? Yes, sir. Get me Towers on the phone. Please, please don't, 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 don't call them up. It's all right. I, you know, I'm not supposed to be here. I, they didn't send me. They told me about the drafts and I came here. Please don't do that. I, I thought you was a photographer, but you have no cameras. So... Never mind about Towers. Yes, sir. There seems to be something wrong. Oh, no, no, nothing is wrong. I promise you. I, I just wanted to make a little money. That's, That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> yes, Mr. Trevor. Yes, Mr. Trevor. Yes, Mr. Trevor. Gentlemen, don't you think this looks a little haywire? What do you mean by haywire? I'm a mother, I tell you, for $2.75 an hour. Well, that's undoubtedly a bargain, but you see, we have no possible use unless any of you gentlemen happen to be photographers or painters. Oh, ça va, j'ai compris, c'est partout pareil. Prends en Amérique, tous les hommes sont des cochons. C'est amusant de regarder une femme se déshabiller pour y a un très drôle, c'est spirituel. Bande idiot, naturellement, c'est le patron qui est le plus bête comme toujours. Well, gentlemen, there must be a moral in this somewhere, so will you all go back to your offices and try and find out what it is? That'll be all. Thank you. Don't bother to go upstairs, Frenchie. There's a lock on your door. You're not going to let me in my room? I'm not going to let you in, and I'm not going to let you close out till you've paid your rent. But uh, I don't owe you so much. I can take a few things. You can't take a thing. That's the law. Now out you get. Go on out. No, I won't. You won't. It's not fair. I'll get a job tomorrow. On your way. But you can't do this. You must help me. If you want help, get it from Washington. Washington's dead. Haven't you heard? Oh, Gloria, please talk to her. You keep out of this, Miss Patterson. I pay $7 a week in this fire trap, and if there's any fun going on, I want to be in on it. Stop this clatter. I'm trying to think. It's all right, Grumpy. The Queen is trying to slip Snow White the apple again. She's four days behind in our rent. And you're two weeks behind with your hot water. I have to live, too, you know. Why? Don't you talk to me like that. I'll do better than that. I won't even talk to you at all. And I'll pay her rent. Oh, these people, they just need to shut up. Why are you always so good to me? Oh, I suppose you have to be good to something, and my dog died a week before you moved in here. I must get a job tomorrow. I've been telling you for months that the only job for a woman is marriage. Who would marry me? There's nothing wrong with you that a nice, rich husband couldn't cure. Did you marry a rich husband? I married a hooker. All he had was a time step and a shovel off to Buffalo. Late in life, he became ambitious. And got rich? And got 20 years. Please don't feel sorry about him. But when I married this heel beater, I turned down a man who had millions. Every time I think of it, I want to cut my throat. Oh, I could have married anyone then. But you love the hoofer. My luck. We used to go to Rise and Webbers every night after the show. I could have had anyone there from the millionaire Johns down to the bus boy. Yeah, was a funny kid, that bus boy. He... Say, he's at the Savoy Grand right now. He'll give you a job. Oh, you think so? I know so. He'll do anything I ask him. 
and I'll ask him tonight. Where are you going? But this is the Savoy Grand, no? Yes, I know, but let's go around the back and surprise them. Oh. Sure. Where do you expect to find the head waiter in the bridal suite? Come on. I beg your pardon. Thanks. It's Mediterranean. One dollar and twenty-five cents. I beg your pardon, sir. Blank steak, peas a la crease. Five dollars and ninety-five cents. That's an outrage. I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm looking for Mike Levetovich. He's a captain. I'm sir. sorry, Levetovich is uh, too far away, Louis. Sixteen, two dollars and eight cents. He's in the dining room. You'll have to wait. Chicken a la king, salad, New Orleans, four dollars and eighty-five cents. Very important, sir. Would you mind sitting down a moment, please? Salad, Rouge, Savelle, three dollars and forty cents. Oh, yes, sir. What's the idea? In a salad chiffon for Mrs. Britton, the garlic must be just Gloria. I don't believe it. Oh, it's not you. <laughs> oh, but it is you, and you look so good. I thought you were back at Rice and Weber's. I was a busboy then. But when Gloria's Gloria used to come in after the follies, who, who, I ask you, cooked her eggs and bacon? I won't And I'll tell you who it was. It was me, Mike the busboy. Is this your daughter? Oh, no, this is my friend, Mr. Cortillon. Oh, on it, on it. How do you do? How do you oh, do? What's all the it was Gloria Patterson and Lights then. Mike, I'd like to talk to you when you're not so busy. Oh, I'm never too busy to talk to a pal. Thanks. Uh, this kid wants a job. Job? Yes, yeah, she's one of those rare people who really want to work for a living. Well, I can't put anybody on right now. This is the bad season, you know. Oh, yeah? What do you do in the good season? Hang them on the chandeliers? When it gets better, I can't put her on because I won't be here myself. I'm going to open my own restaurant. Oh, really? When? Soon. I found the place. But not the money, eh? I've got the 3000 to put on the line. All I need is a little money to renovate. Well, I'm sure you'll get it. Oh, as soon as I open, I'll put her on, probably. Hey, Mike. Your wallet upstairs. Mr. Duncan just checked in. Room 1452. Okay. Uh, excuse me, please, but it was my best customer. He always wants my personal service. I'll be right back. Sit and wait for me, huh? Excuse me. That's too bad. It would be so nice to work here. Mm -hmm. Look at those girls in there. That's where you belong, not in the kitchen. The way to a man's heart is through his eyes, baby. That's the modern version. He believes what he sees and takes bicarbonate of soda for his indigestion instead of a wife that can cook. Those women spend three billion dollars a year in beauty parlors and not for cookbooks. Sure, very hard to understand sometimes. Seventy percent of all the money in America is in the hands of women. You understand that, don't you? Yes, but... And if the boys don't look out, the girls will get the other thirty percent. Gee, kid, if I looked like you and knew what I know now, I'd be in there brushing caviar off a mink coat this minute. But you were very beautiful once. I saw the pictures. Oh, sure. I was a Lulu, but with the brains of a butterfly. And by the time I had sense, I looked like somebody's aunt. Oh, well, maybe I'd better do this very soon, no? Now you're talking, honey. All we need is some clothes, a decent place to live, where you'll meet the right kind of people, and some money, not very much. Three thousand dollars. I'm so sorry, but Mr. Duncan is such an important man. Mike. Please, about the car. Mike, you need more money for your restaurant, don't you? Well, with another two thousand, I could have the most beautiful... You wouldn't want to go in on a deal, would you? I'd like to talk to you a little about it. You want to talk to me? Well, come right in. Come. Can you imagine you and I being partners? I have a little place for you. We can rent the clothes. We'll give her a great big build-up. We'll move right here in the hotel where you can keep your eyes on your investment. It's crazy. It's insane. It's my three thousand dollars. What are you talking about, three thousand dollars? When she's the rich Mrs. Hooser, she'll back you in the biggest restaurant in town. Look at her. Can you imagine what she'll look like when she's all dressed up? Oh, come on, take a chance. I'm no gambler. I save this money dime by dime. I'm not going to do it even if it does mean a hole in the wall instead of a great big restaurant. No, my answer is no, definitely no. Do you think it would work? this way, please. I know you're going to like this apartment. It's the finest one of the house, really. Then that's the one we want. I understand there was a brilliant season in Paris this year. Oh, yes, a brilliant season. 
Ah, oh, how wonderful gay Paris. The queen of all the cities of the world. And pray, madame. Mademoiselle? Southern exposure, all newly decorated. Oh, it, it's lovely. She means it'll do. Uh, now, this way, please. This, madame, is the sleeping chamber. Nicole, the bedroom. Oh, this is very... Mm, it's all right. You better start unpacking the few things we brought along. Over there, madame, is the other bedroom. Now, if there is anything that Madame requires in the way of special service, we shall be only too happy to arrange it for you. We want your stay with us to be a memorable and enjoyable one, because we feel that there isn't a hotel in America so well equipped as ours to make you as comfortable as you were in the home you just left. What a sweet thought. Well, well, well. Uh, well, does uh, Madame wish to order some uh, uh, luncheon? Isn't it a little early for luncheon, Captain? Oh, no, no. We always like to order it early. <laughs> Madame? You need a maid to help you unpack, you wanted to telephone the clerk at the desk. I think my niece and I can manage that. And thank remember, you. we're all ready to serve you at any time, all of us. No service too great, no service too small. Thank you. I thought he was going to stay for the weekend. I'm going to get settled. Gloria, Mike, look, look, it's beautiful. Oh, oh, it's like a dream. It costs 30 dollars a day to rent this coat. It's no dream, it's a nightmare. Do you think it's better with the color up? Well, <laughs> what do I know? Not very much. Why did you engage this suite? Because Bill Duncan lives across the hall. And who is Bill Duncan? He has $10 million and owns half of Canada. Oh, in that case, we're going to dedicate this little number to him. Oh. Try it on, darling. Oh. Look out, Mr. Gray, look out! Who? Who? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. She didn't see it. But if she burns the coat, we have to buy the coat. And we have to buy the coat, we have to go to jail. And, and if, if we, we go, go to jail, you'll get a pardon because you're so cute. Right. Try it on, darling. She's such a child. And while she's growing up, it's costing me $60 a day for the suite. And that's uh, says a little over four cents a minute. If you lose one penny on this deal, I'll give you my right eye. And I'll take it. Oh, if I only had $10 left, I'd go to a doctor and have my head examined. Come on, tell me more about this Duncan man. Well, he owns half of Canada. Isn't that enough? Maybe we could do better than that. Uh, oh, Mrs. Patterson, I have your credit card for... I... I don't know. It feels all right to me. Uh, may I ask the meaning of this? Are there any complaint about the chairs? They feel a bit hard. I was oh. just trying them out, sir. Yes, I think it must be stuffed with feathers from a, 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 a stool pigeon. Oh, personally, for me, uh, never, never mind. Yes, sir. Oh, it's all right once you're in it. It's the first meeting that's rather Yes, I understand. <laughs> Captain, you're wrong. There is a decided shock. How are the others? Try that one. Uh, yes, sir. It's just like being a test pilot. <laughs> Uh, how's that one, madame? Oh, this is divine. See? Oh, if I just had my boots and saddle. Dear. I'd like to have breakfast. I thought you were frightened. No. I want my breakfast right here. In bed? Mm-hmm. Oh. I want some honeydew melon and some toast with lots of butter. And then and then and then and then and then and then I want some bacon. <laughs> some bacon with eggs. Two eggs. Two eggs. Two eggs. And then, then I want some sausage. And a, a jelly donut. Yes. Is that all? Oh, no, no, no. No, I want some coffee. And a shower. All right, lovely. I'll order it. That'll be all. Room service, please. This is 1460. One toast and one coffee, please. Well, do we do that Bill Duncan business this morning, or have you lost your nerve? Oh, no, 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 I'll do it. But suppose you don't believe it. When he gets a look at you in that new outfit, he'll want to believe it. You think so? Sure, then it'll be the same old story in the same old settings. Lunch one day, dinner the next, hockey games, races, nightclubs. Oh, I like that. That doesn't mean a thing. But if he invites you to the opera and sits you in the family box, 
Then, my dear, that's love. Dans du drapelier dix ans sur la place, quand tu as perdu ton maillot, tellement tu t'es maigre, parce qu'on a pu rire. I beg your pardon, but I, I don't know what you're saying. Uh, but Charlie, tu, 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 tu ne sais plus parler français? I'm sorry, but I don't understand French. Uh, have you been in a war? No. You are well? Quite well, thank you. How are you? You, you are not Charlie du Marais, who was so big and played with me in Cannes when we lived next door? Well, I was so big, but I didn't live next door to you, and I was never in Cannes. Oh, you're not Charlie. No, I'm Bill. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Don't be, please. I thought you... Oh. Excuse me, I, I didn't... Uh, good morning, Mr. Duncan. him since last New Year's. Hey, Jim! Hey, Jim! Shh! Bill, when did you get in? Shh! Didn't you get my letter? Shh! I just missed you in Chicago. Shh! I know, I phoned your office. Shh! Why don't you move into my place? Shh! I can't hear a word you're saying. These people are making too much noise. Shh! I see you outside. Excuse me, I'll be right back. What's the matter? Well, I know this man, I met him. I think I'm all fucking knock. How's everything in Winnipeg? Oh, he went to get the mustache. Well, that's something I picked up when I had the flu. Remember the go around we had New Year's Eve? Do I? I didn't sober up till Easter. <laughs> Gentlemen, gentlemen, who's he talking to? The caviar. So the curtain is about to go up. <laughs> Look, will you go out and buy yourself a nice pair of long pants now? You're getting to be a big boy now. <laughs> Please go away. <laughs> Who are you with? An advertiser. Get rid of him and join us. I oh, wish I could, but he's got a big contract in his pocket. Oh, forget the contracts. Come on. God, it's business. Who are you with? A girl. Mm, local entry? No, she's from Paris. Kentucky. France. Oh, oh Jim, she's really something. Two diplomats tried to blow their brains out last year because she wouldn't marry them. Sounds interesting. Interesting? She's marvelous. The rage of Parisian society. Daughter of a French baron or something. Her aunt told me so. Oh, she has an aunt. All French girls have aunts. Well, never mind the aunt. When do I meet the girl? Do you still like brunette? Sure, oh, you know. <laughs> That's fine. She's a blonde. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> well, but suppose he, he brings him in here. Oh, he won't till after intermission. Mr. Doesn't. I present my best friend, Jim Trevor. How do you do? Nicole, this is Jim Trevor. I wanted him to join us later, but he couldn't make it, so I, I brought him in to say hello. Charmed. And don't believe a word he says. I wouldn't miss going to your party for the world. <laughs> really? And now we'll see what comes next. A little salad, perhaps? Where's that on the main? Right over here, monsieur. For the entree, I will suggest poulet, vinaigrette, sous cloche, la spécialité de la maison. You hear that, mama? I want ham and eggs. Two ham and eggs, then. I think I'll have a little roast duck. Excuse me. Mrs. Patterson, mademoiselle, Monsieur Duncan. We'll have a beautiful table for three. Mm, I wish you were right. Make it for four, Mike. Uh, right this way, please. Why for? We're having company for supper. Who? Trouble. On my money, having trouble for supper. Sit down, Jim. And does the young lady stay in the hotel, too? Oh, yes, right across the hall from me with her aunt. <laughs> well, cozy. A little supper, perhaps? May I suggest some Russian specialties? Shashlik or cutlet de Moscou? Why is he trouble? He knows all about Nicole. Why did you tell him? The lobster is very nice tonight. No, I don't care for lobster. Besides, I didn't tell him you're dope. Dope is right. My money's all gone. Uh, poulet de vinaigrette? 
What are you ordering, Mrs. Patterson? Oh, a little poulet vinaigrette for madame. And for monsieur, perhaps a little fish? I'll have the same as madame. Yeah, there was. Uh, your party, Mr. Duncan? Yes, it's a sort of celebration. Oh, in that case, a little champagne with a chanton, lobster cold with a sauce suprême for you, mademoiselle. That'll be fine. Yeah, very well, sir. Two very nice cold lobsters and two tough chickens. Quite tough. Never mind, never mind. Never mind. How long have you been in New York, mademoiselle? Oh, well, uh, Just a week. She arrived the same day I did. A week? Hmm? I should have said you'd been here much longer. Oh, uh, she fools everyone. I'm sure she does. That reminds me, I don't know why, but the funniest thing happened to me about three weeks ago. This young lady came in. Uh, uh, wouldn't you young people like to dance? Oh, yes. Oh, it would be a great pleasure if I may. Yes, but it's my pleasure first. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt your story. Oh, I'll tell it you later. <laughs> you know, Bill's a very old friend of mine. We've known each so other. So I gather when you two boys nearly broke up the opera. <laughs> well, well, ever since we were about... I'll give her a necky. Keep your head. Next time I'll keep my money, too. No, I'm very much interested in your niece. Now, there's a girl... You know, I don't know how that dear child does it, but every man she meets is... I'm sorry, but my interest is not romantic. Oh. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, that'll be such a relief to her to know that uh, <clears throat> no one is interested in, in her. Now, wait. There's one thing I want to ask you before Bill comes back to the table. Uh, moi de Chandon 28, sir? Yes, but serve it later, please. But a glass for my dad. Oh, yes. All right, but make it quick. It was like this thing. Now, your niece came into my Would you like some bitters in your wine, sir? No. Well, some people like it. I do. I don't. <laughs> yes, sir. One does, one doesn't. Now, you will probably want to shoot me. There's one thing about Bill I want to tell you. Would you like to try some first, sir? Will you please serve it and get out of here? But the glass to madame. One thing about Bill I want you to know. Attaboy, keep it up. In a moment, I'll pour it down his neck. A glass for you, sir. Wouldn't you like to pull up a chair and join the party? Oh, thank you very much, sir. But the help is not allowed to sit with the guests. Thank you, just the same. Now, about your knees. Oh, what here are... they come. Come on, let's drink to them. Oh, they're such a lovely couple. You're just in time. The waiter insisted upon pouring the wine. I wish you'd insist on pouring some for me. <laughs> Immediately, sir. Well, I've had the most wonderful chat with your aunt while you were dancing. Did you tell your funny story? No, I didn't. I wanted to wait till you got back to the table. I thought perhaps Mademoiselle would like to... To dance, but certainly you like. Oh, my friend, I did. It comes just at the right time, too. And remember, don't believe a word he says to you. Jim and I are great friends. Yes, so he told me, Mr. Duncan. Well, why don't you call me Bill? If I were 15 years younger, I'd do better than that. Why, Mrs. Patterson? Call me Gloria. <laughs> Tell me the whole story. Just pretend I'm your uncle, like you're pretending she's your aunt. Pardon? Now, listen, I know there's a lot of monkey business going on. All I want to be sure of is that my friend Bill isn't going to be the monkey. No? No. Now, come on. Too many people about? We'll go to the bar. No, no, I don't go to the bar. Well, you have to drink. I don't drink anything with you. Well, then, back we go to the table, and I tell Bill the whole story. I, I, I drink a champagne cocktail. Fine. Champagne cocktails. Yes, sir. Well, I'm all ears. So you won't talk, huh? All right, you don't have to. I'll do the talking. Now, this whole act is to impress Bill that you're a nice gal from a nice family. You want to marry him, and then in a few months you'll divorce him and then live happily ever after on the alimony, right? It's a very cheap, dishonest idea, and I think that. Shall I go on? Go ahead. I can took it. Good. I can dish it out, too. I want you to lay off Bill. I want you to tell him the truth. Because if you don't, I will. But you don't know anything about me. I know enough about you. You were in my office three weeks ago with another kind of a racket. And once Bill hears about that, mademoiselle, you're fini. And then I know... Uh, mademoiselle, your dinner is already served. Are you here again? Here? Why, yes, sir. I've been in this hotel for 11 years. Well, will you get out of here for five minutes? Oh, yes, sir. Right away, sir. Thank you. Decided who'll tell him? I'll tell him. Good. Tomorrow? Oh, no, no. You're going to tell him right now while I'm here. I started this thing and I want to be in on the finish. All right. You'll see the finish. Sorry to be rough on you, but war is war. 
You said it, Mr. Trevor. That's strange. They're not dancing. Hmm? Oh, they must be. I just saw them. Oh, there they are. Where? At the bar. Oh, yes. What are they doing over there? Well, I know one way to find out. Let's join them. Nice friend I have. I've heard that man's best friend is always the dog. Here they come. All right, I... I try to do a good job. Remember us? I just thought of you for a dance, but this is going too far. Oh, Bill, I'm sorry, but we've been talking and... Shall I tell him now? Certainly, go ahead. Tell me why. A story. Oh. Mr. Trevor wants me to tell you a story. Oh, uh, don't you think you better tell me first? <laughs> no, no, I can tell it to everybody. He wants me to tell you that I once went to his office and... That's right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And... <laughs> Well, he was taking photographs, and I was supposed to be a model to pose with traps. <laughs> and, and he says it will be a big joke. Do you think it's funny? <laughs> Very funny. Excruciating. But don't you see why it's so funny? Because I've never posed for one picture, and he's not a photographer. Everybody knows this. <laughs> and, and he says, do you know what he says? He says, if I tell you this, he's going to take me out for dinner tomorrow night. <laughs> you little double crosser. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Mr. Trevor. We'd better leave, Mr. Duncan. I'll see you to your room, Mr. Trevor seems to be a very peculiar man. I'm sorry, I could have sworn he was sober. That'll be 2.50, sir. Take out for the glass, too, please. Uh, the glass is on me, sir. I can't understand it. He's changed so completely, inside a year, too. I knew a man once whose hair turned white overnight. Well, I wouldn't believe it about Jim unless I'd seen it. You know, this man wouldn't believe it about his hair until it became bald the following night. But that convinced him. Please, Gloria. I was just telling you. Well, don't forget we have a breakfast out on the terrace in the morning. Good night, Mrs. Patterson. Good night, Bill. I promise to find you jelly donuts. And if I have to turn the whole of New York inside out, I'll get them. Thank you, Bill. Good night, Nicole. Good night. Little orphan Annie gets out of this jam, she'll be a miracle woman. Nice trick you pull in the bar. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Now, there's something very funny about that girl. She's not what you think she is at all. Well, find a new line, Jim. Oh, but really, Bill, I'm serious. Oh, sure you are. Remember the Bermuda? Sonia wasn't worthy of me, and you finished up with her in Honolulu. Ah, oh, but this is different. And I did the same thing to you at Miami. What was her name? Eloise. But now, let's be sensible about this. Thing. I intend to be. Well, I don't blame you for trying, but it won't work. All right, be smart. But I tell you, she's a phony, and I'm going to prove it to you if it takes a month. Oh, Jim, Nicole's the wrong girl for your brand of humor. Uh, the young lady in your party forgot her rap. It wasn't my party, and she's not a lady. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm sure you know your friends better than I do. with me. What kind of a business is leaving fur coats around? What do you think? They grow on trees? Now, now, be quiet. She can't just leave around. We'll be very proud of our little girl tonight. She certainly saved us all. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. The way you got rid of them, that was great. Allowing me to be the first one to congratulate you. You turned the tide of battle. What's the matter? It's the first time anyone has ever said anything like that to me before. Said what? He said I'm cheap. Well, you certainly paid him back for that. In spades. He's got some nerve. Cheap. I figured out just now how much it costs. $87.50 in rental. Cheap. What does he want you to wear? Radium? He meant I was dishonest. Darling, all women are dishonest. If they weren't, the world would be divided into two classes of people. Old maids and bachelors. Look. That's dishonest. Plucking your eyebrows is dishonest. The rouge on your cheeks is dishonest. And a fat woman in a girdle, huh, that's highway robbery. If marrying a nice boy like Bill is the wrong idea, don't tell me that starving and waiting for a Prince Charming to ride up on a white horse is the right one. Of course, it's so simple. When I put parsley on a steak, does anybody eat the parsley? No, it's just for show. Now, what you are doing is just putting parsley... Please stop talking about that. Ah, oh, Nico, don't let that Trevor influence. Leave me alone. 
Now, look, I'm a partner. Now, leave her alone. You're just a silent partner. Leave her alone. Somebody calls it cheap, then right away she gets unreasonable. But can I get unreasonable? No. Oh, now, Mike, everything's going to be all right. Sure, it's going to be great. I started out to get a restaurant, and I'd be lucky if I wind up with a ham sandwich. Just take your tea on, please. I'm calling for Mr. James Trevor. The line's still busy, sir. Just hold on. She'll run out of breath sooner or later. Yes, sir. We all do, sir, sooner or later. I'm still waiting, operator. It's a dangerous business, sir, interfering between a man and a maid. Yes, Rick. I know when I'm in trouble without you telling me. There's a similar situation in my own family, sir. As a matter of fact, that's how my second cousin lost his right eye. I'm still waiting, operator. Mr. Duncan's my best friend. That's the only reason I'm doing it. It was my second cousin's brother, sir, who knocked out my second cousin's eye. Hello? Is this the Rage of Paris at the Pride of Hoboken or whatever you're calling yourself today? This is Jim Trevor. Where's Bill? Well, you can get Mr. Duncan at his club. He's at a meeting. Oh, he's at a meeting. Well, that's grand because you're going to have dinner with me tonight. What? Oh, oh no. no. I don't like you. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not sorry at all, but you're still going to have dinner with me at 7.30 sharp. No? Remember those four men in my office? Well, they remember you. And if you don't come, I'm going to have the whole quartet down there singing Mammy right in front of your door until Bill comes home. Eat. It's not poison. Anything else, Miss? No. Well, I'm sorry you didn't enjoy your dinner. Well, I, I'd rather like to know why I'm here. Well, I thought there might be a chance for us to find a nice, friendly way of calling off hostilities. Pardon? Ending our little war. Oh. Uh, you can serve the coffee now. Yes, sir. Isn't there any way I can stop you from marrying Bill? Now, you're not going to tell me you're madly in love with him. Is that French wine? Do you love him? I... I would like to leave now, please. You're a very smart girl. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, yes, you are. Because if you told me you were in love with him, I wouldn't believe you. But by refusing to answer, you get the credit for being honest. Bill is very lucky. To get you? No. To have a friend like you, who fights so hard for him. Come on, now. Why don't you be regular and just... Drop the whole thing. I wouldn't need money. That's what I thought. Three thousand dollars. Uh huh. Three thousand. Did you hear that, Wrigley? You want me to, sir? I do. I did. Good. And remember it when I bring Mr. Duncan back here. No, no, no! You can't do that. I didn't want you to give it to me. It's a trick. It's terrible. I know it's terrible, but it's my turn. Now you just sit down and relax. No, I go now. Wrigley. Oh. Yes, sir? If this young lady is not here when I get back, you're fired. Thank you, sir. But this is not fair. You can't do... All's fair in the war, and this is a little bit of both. You can't do that. I'm sorry, mademoiselle, but the age of chivalry is dead. And when I come back, I'll take you to the funeral. You big fool. Will you let me go? This is a free country. I... Oh, you have no right to do that to me. Let me go. Oh. like to know. Never mind how old I am. Oh, don't be nasty. You have to watch me, but we might as well be good friends until they come back. Forty-six. No, really? But you look ten years younger than that. Nonsense. No nonsense. You're a very attractive young man. You know what you ought to do? You ought to go to France. All the women will be crazy about you. If you know what I mean. You're wasting your breath, Miss, talking to me like that. All right, I shut up.
could do that. What? Oh, that's easy. Why, it's marvelous. No, that's nothing. I can do much better than that. Really? Sure. You have a watch? Yes. Now, watch the watch. Why, that's one that... Where's my watch? Right here. Oh, my sincere appreciation. Oh, that's nothing yet. But you should see what I could do with the... Uh, with those flowers. <laughs> what could you do with them? Well, I could... I could make each one light up like a lamp. No. Mm -hmm. How could you possibly do that? Well, that's a professional secret. You go in this corner, turn your face to the wall, and count slowly to 25. And then you turn around and you will see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, Mr. Smythe. Did you find out about that train? Yes, sir, I did, sir. There's a train that leaves Grand Central Station and connects with the D&H. I beg your uh, pardon, but uh, just a minute, sir, please. Uh, it leaves New York at 8 p.m., and you get to Montreal next morning about... Uh, can I stop over at Albany? I'm terribly sorry, but this is very important. Are, must... are you a member of this club, sir? No, I'm not. But well, I... will you kindly wait till I get through? Uh, we're going to start... On the noon train, you'll have a four-hour layover in Albany, sir. Four hours? That's the best connection we can make, sir. Very well, then I won't go. Four hours in Albany. Imagine that. Uh, is Mr. Duncan here? Who, sir? William Jerome Duncan. William Jerome Duncan, a senior or junior? Junior. He's at a meeting. Oh, he's left. It was a very short meeting tonight. He said he'd be at his hotel, sir. <laughs> I want you to come up to my apartment. I've got... Oh! Good evening. Well, this is a surprise. Well, I think I have to leave now. I'm in a hurry. Good night. My cousin Teresa, I'm Uncle Edward. How do you do? How do you do? So happy. Captain and Mrs. McMasters. How this do is you Nicole do? and her aunt, Mrs. Patterson. How do you How do you do? My cousin George Morgan and my aunt Amelia. How do you How do? do? You do? Mother, this is Nicole. My dear child. I'm so happy to see you. Uh, thank you. It's very nice to meet you. Come on, I want you to meet Father. And you are Mrs. Patterson? <laughs> yes, I am. Bill has told me about you, too. I've been to Paris several times. My brother Eric has a branch of his business over there. On the Champs Elysees. You know, I think your niece resembles you quite a lot. Perhaps I should say you resemble your niece. No, it doesn't matter. We all look alike in our family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we don't in ours. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Duncan and I want you and your aunt to come up and spend uh, a few weeks with us at Winnipeg. Oh, that's very nice. It'll give us a chance to get better acquainted, and uh, I'm sure you'll like it there. Do you like her? Caviar, pheasant, champagne. This is a celebration. Boy, have I got a restaurant. Have I got a restaurant. I don't know. You don't know? Well, have you? I have. I have the best. I have the most marvelous. I have the... Now, you sit over there till I need you. Yes, sir. Uh, I can't do this, sir. Now, you do as you're told. You're working on borrowed time anyway. I should have fired you last Tuesday. Well, why don't you fire me now, sir? Well, if you do a good job tonight, perhaps I will. Oh, thank you very much, sir. And my policy has always been never to see the family except at weddings and funerals. That's true. Well, we must be off. But you've only just arrived, Mrs. Patterson. Well, you see, we're, uh, we're, going, to, uh, we're going to ride to the hounds in the morning. It's uh, tally-ho at dawn. Yes, you're going to get up very early in the morning to catch a fox, what? Yes, and stay up very late at night to catch a mink. 
This is a surprise. It's always a surprise when someone not invited shows up, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. I didn't know you wanted to come. Oh, forget it. Hello. Uh, we've met before. I just can't place you. Oh, you remember good old Wrigley? Oh, yes. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Wrigley? Uh, how do you do, sir? My man. Oh. <laughs> That's a very funny idea. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable, Wrigley. <laughs> now, speak your little piece, Wrigley, and we'll get out of here. <clears throat> well, I, uh... Go on, speak up, speak up. But uh, I can't do this, Mr. Trevor. All right, then I will. Last Tuesday night, your fiancé was in my apartment trying to get $3,000. Sorry, but you asked for it. Oh, right on. Mr. Cousin. You big chump. You must go now, sir. Remember my second cousin. Am I fired now, sir? No. Oh. I saw the whole thing, Mr. Duncan. You pulled the knife on me. What's happened? What did they do? Nicole? Where's Nicole? Now, don't worry, my dear. We'll find Oh, that child's always running to fights and fires. Yes, my dear. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that would happen. Please come back, and I will make clear what you meant. Oh, something is broken? Oh, we must call a doctor. Where are we going? Oh, oh, take me back. Stop this car. Take me back, you hear me? You can go back when Duncan knows all about you. Oh, but I'll tell him everything. I... You told him everything once before. No, you can't come back with me. I'll fix it up. You'll I probably prob fix it so they'll call the police. I'm sorry, young lady, but you're too tricky. But I won't do any more tricks. I From promise From now on, you. you can do all the tricks you know, but they won't do you any good. What are you going to do with me? I haven't made up my mind yet. Well, I don't go with you. I, I jump out. Go ahead. It's your neck. Break it if you want to. Oh, you are a, a, a... Beast is the word. Yes, beast. That's what you are. Right. Now you turn right back. Look out! <laughs> now, will you please tell me where you are going to take me? Be quiet and keep still and you'll soon find out. Well, I don't care, because when I get there, I get back. Sure. How? What's that? I get itch. You want? I get itch. You mean hitch hike? That's what I said. Splendid. The place where we're going, the only thing that goes by is a milk truck. And that's at 4 o'clock in the morning. We'll have a lot of practice doing this. Oh, ow! Oh, that's nothing. Just wait. I'll make a lot of trouble for you. Go ahead. I can took it. Well, here's where we get out. I don't get out. Oh, that's too bad, because I'm going in there, and where I go, my coat goes. So sorry, please. I stay right here. And I'd turn up the window if I were you. It's safer. Safer? Yes. Well, not that I think anything will happen, but I think it's wiser not to take any chances with so many wild animals about. Oh, I'm not afraid. Oh, you're not? Well, that's fine. Hey! Watch your step. It's rough here. I don't want you to break your neck. I'm sorry. I can't wish you the same. Oh, that's the old caretaker. Used to be a hog calling champion. What's a hog? Hog's a very big pig. <laughs> now I could say something, but I don't. Hello? Hello, Pops. It's me, Jimmy. Jimmy? Oh, oh it can't be true. Say, hey, hey, let me have a look at you. <laughs> Why, it is, Jimmy. Gosh, it's good to see you. Uh -huh. And you're looking fine, too. I feel great. Huh? It is so long since you've been up here that I was beginning to commence to forget what you look like. Oh. Hiya, oh. miss. Say, son, what are you doing up in this neck of the woods? Oh, that's a long story, Pops. Well, it ought to be worth hearing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you later. Coat. Yeah. Right. I'll open the house and light the fire. Grand. So it'll be nice and warm for well, you. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Now I go on a sit-down strike. Well, I'd better get you a coat. No, I don't want any coat. I'm going to get pneumonia and die. Then what will you do with the body? 
I'll show you. Go <clears throat> inside and like it. No, please don't. What's the matter, you ticklish? Yes, I'm ticklish. Good. Here you are. Make yourself at home. By golly. <laughs> it's about time. Pops, we better feed this lady. She's pretty wild. I'm not. Well, the best to both of you. <laughs> so you got him in double harness, eh? I always said when he got spliced, he'd pick out a lollapalooza like you. What did he call me, lollapalooza? I hope you'll be as happy as two jaybirds in a cherry tree. And I'm mighty glad that somebody as putty as you is in the family at last. Pardon? He thinks we're married. Pops. Oh. Now, you've got this all wrong. Now, let me explain. I met... Why don't we tell him the truth? I have every intention of telling him the truth. Well, I think we, we should tell him. It didn't need to be told. I noted it the minute I seen him carry you over the doorstep. It's a custom in these parts. Pops, yeah. it may be the custom to do that, but there's also a custom... Don't to be... be mad, Jimmy. You know it's a secret, but if you have to know, you have to know, hmm? Oh, secret, eh? <laughs> well, I won't tell so. I'll have something for you to eat and two shakes of a lamb and pig. Why did you tell him we were married? Oh, I didn't tell him. He told me, and I said yes. See me? Stop calling me Jimmy! Well, if you like, I'll call you Mr. Trevor, but I think it sounds funny from a bride. You're not a bride, and you're not going to be. That's why you're here. And you're going to stay here until you make Bill Duncan understand what you are and what you did. But if I stay here and don't say we are married, I get a bad reputation. And I get a bad reputation if you do. Well? Well, what? Then take me back. Not until you learn to agree with me. Okay, Jimmy. There's some country ham and some country cheese and some homemade bread. <laughs> If I'd known you was coming up, I'd have cooked the goose and baked the cake for you. Oh, this'll do nicely, Father. Yeah. Well, when you get through eating, just ring the bell and come clear up. Well, where is the bell? Now, son, you know darn well we ain't got no bell. Just give out the old holler. You know. I remember. <laughs> yeah, I told you. Say, ain't you eating nothing? No, thank you. Girls nowadays don't eat no more than a hummingbird. <laughs> ain't feeling poorly, are you? Oh, no, I'm just nervous, I think. Yeah. Well, I kind of thought to be a case. Mr. Pops. Yes. Where is the telephone? Right over there. But it ain't connected. Not connected? No. Well, can't, can't you make it connected? Oh, sure. I'll notify the company the first thing in the morning. In They'll the morning? send a man up to fix it in about a week or ten days. That's what they call service or something. But I got another name for it. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -hmm. I always thought the French liked to eat. Yes, but they're very particular. About their food? No, about who they eat with. Who is this man? It's my great uncle. He's a bachelor and rich and he's dead and so you can't eat with him either. Why do they all have guns? They were hunting. Oh. Hunters? Huh? I come from a long line of hunters. Oh, no. No, I think you come from a long line of sourpusses. And you're a sourpuss too, that's natural. Well, that's so. Ah, that's so. Oh, I'm so sorry you won't eat with me. But of course I understand. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. Well, you might as well let me in on the joke. I'm not going <laughs> to... Oh, it's not a joke for you. It's a big joke for me. Oh. Mm, I'm just thinking what happens when Bill Duncan comes here. Oh, is Bill Duncan coming here? Sure. He comes right in here and he says, you asked for it, Jim, and right in the nose, then you'll fall over there in this direction. Oh, oh, pardon me. I'd better remove this so you don't cut your head. Because if you cut your head, we will have to put a bandage on it. Uh, we don't want to be bothered with that. Naturally not. You, you think that's the way it'll happen, do you? Why not? It happened that way before and it happened that way again. And um, you like the idea? Oh, I think it would be a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I'm going to bed. What? I'm going to bed. I've had a very tiring day. Oh, but I can't stay here. I have nothing. Well, well... You'll find everything you'll need in that room there. Pajamas in the dresser and slippers under the bed. But I want to go back to New York. Oh. Well, that's very simple. You just take this road down here, turn to your left. It's 86 miles and you ought to be able to make it in about uh, four days on foot. If you don't take me back, I'll scream. Go ahead. Pretty good. Try it again. Ah! Good. 
Good night. Come in. Come in. I hear you the first time. Hey, you didn't eat much, did you? <laughs> More of that hummingbird stuff. Come What is it? No. Never. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh you was asleep? No, I was doing a fan dance. I'm very sorry. I suppose you're afraid of that great big room. Now you'll go back and get scared to death. No, no, I'm not afraid. I... Well, I am, so go away. But I, I can't get the, the window open. Well, it's very simple. All you do is just lift it up. Yes, but I have lift up and nothing happens. Well, then just lift up again. And if nothing happens again? Then go to sleep. But I can't go to sleep if the window is not up. I, I need the fresh air. You know, it's a terrible house. All the fresh air is outside, and inside is nothing. All right, I'll get you your fresh air. See? It's not so easy. Uh, must be stuck down there, the rest, the rest of it seems broader. Thank you very much. I'll get to sleep. No, no. Not until I lock my door. You don't have to lock your door. I'm locking mine. Well, I'm going to lock my door too. Just the same. I really don't care what you lock, but get to bed. What is it now? Same thing, the window. What's the matter with the window? Oh, nothing the matter with the window. It's you. You shut the door so hard that you break the window down and I cannot put the window up. So it's not up. I'll fix your window. Thank you. I hope that's all. How can I get a glass of water? It's practically impossible to get up here in the mountains because you have to go all the way from here to there. Take the carafe between the thumb and the forefinger, carefully removing the top and laying it gently to the side, then lifting the glass. This is the glass and... And? And then I go out and get you a glass of water. No, no, I, I don't want some. I, I think it's too complicated. Well, if there's anything else you want, will you please tell me now or forever after give me peace? No, thank you. I, I think I'm going to look out of the window, if you don't mind. No, no, it all comes with a dinner. Pardon? Nothing, nothing. Go ahead, look out the window. Do anything you... anything you please. Ah, 
The country is nice. Everything is so quiet. And the little animals talk to one another because people are asleep and cannot harm them. Well, I think I'm going to like it here while we are waiting for Bill Duncan to come and knock you down. Oh, it is so lovely. It's sort of red. The blood is red? No, 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 the back. Uh, I'll get something to rub on it. Mm, yes, alcohol would be good. Oh, yes, the alcohol. Oh. <laughs> yeah, don't make such a fuss. You're not going to die. But I'm going to be a cripple. Oh. Oh, it's just a cramp where the window came down on a muscle. Like a bee. Bzzz, bzz. Oh, yes, yes, it does. It, is that good? Yes, it means you're practically all better. Once the blood gets circulated, you'll forget you ever had a pack. Wait. Try and straighten up. Oh. There we are. You don't think it's broken? Oh, it's not even bent. How's that? Uh, well, I think me and my back feel much better now. Good. I'll get to bed. Yes, please. Remember in the future that bad girls who do bad things always get hurt. You want this light anymore? Well, good night. And I hope it'll be the last time. Mr. Trevor. Yes? I... I have something to tell you. What is it? I think I'm very terrible, no? No. But I think that some of the things you do aren't very nice. Mr. Trevor, I think there's something you don't know about women. Lots. But I'm eager to learn. You know, when a girl gets engaged, her mother doesn't say, I'm happy because Alphonse is so handsome. But she says, I'm happy because Alphonse has such a wonderful job with the gas company. That's true. I never thought of that. And this is very sensible. Because when the children come, it's nice for them to have everything. I know, because I had to get a job in the chorus, and I came all the way to America to work in the Casino de France. And when they closed up, I had nothing, except one good friend, Gloria, and Mike, the head waiter. He puts up the money so I can have nice clothes and maybe meet a nice man. And... Don't you think it's better to love the man you're going to marry? Not always. Gloria married and off to Buffalo. I don't understand that. Well, maybe you understand this. I don't think I'll marry Bill Duncan. Why not, if that's what you believe in? Yes, every woman believes this. But every woman has a big danger. She meets a boy, she likes the way he talks, the way his hands look, the way he looks when he gets angry. And then she falls in love with him, and she doesn't care whether he has money or not. I see. You met such a man? I think so. Wouldn't be me by any chance. Hmm? Well, tell me one thing more then. When did you find out I had more money than Bill Duncan? Please go 
Ayrıldım. But I'm kind of deep, and that sort of helps. Bring lots of coffee, will you, Pop? Sure, lots of coffee, and ham and eggs, and biscuit. Ham and eggs all right for you, too? Who are you yelling at? The missus. Well, she's not in there. She's in here. Come on, time to get started. She mad at you? Nicole. Maybe she's playing possum. Nicole. What are you so glum about? She can't have gone far. Your car's outside. You ain't thinking she's lost, are you, son? Yeah, I think she is. I got my coat, Pop. Sure. Gee whiz, if she'd stayed another day, I'd have had the telephone turned on. Hitchhikers are getting better dressed every day. Can't you go any faster? Sure, but I ain't allowed to leave the truck. Where do you want me to drop you? To the Savoy Grand Hotel. Okay. Savoy Grand? Yes. Gee, can you imagine the face on that doorman when he sees you climb down off this load of cow juice? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Where in heaven's name have you been, child? Well, I... Mr. Trevor took me away. You ruined me. Why did you do it? Mike, I don't know. I just ran out and... You ran out on me. You ran out on $3,000. You ran me out of a restaurant. And then you... You just ran out. Now, now, listen, Mike. I did listen. I listened to you. I listened to her. I listened to everybody. Now, you listen to me. Both of you. I've got something to say to you. Something to say to Duncan. Something to say to everybody. I... Yes, yes, Uncle Eric. I know you call Paris. Yes, I know all about it. Come in. But why do I have to see your lawyer? But afraid of a breach of promise suit? All right, you make the appointment. I'll be down in an hour. Of course, I know it's bad. No, I won't talk to anybody. Why are you so upset, Mike? You should have my trouble. I have. We're in the same boat. I saved $3,000 and those women took every bit of it. They did? Well, they're going to take much more than that away from me. Oh, no. I wouldn't let them take anything from you. If I had my money back, I could get that girl out of the country today. You could? Yes, sir. Oh, we can fix the money easily. Then I can have my restaurant. Cashier, please. How much was it you said they took from you? Oh, just $5,000 even. Tell me, Mike, how on earth did you let them blackmail you? Well, you see, once I was married to a midget. Where are you going now, dear? I don't know. Just any place. Why do that, darling? I don't know. Feel bad? It was all my idea, and everything is my fault. Yes, it is. No. I couldn't do what I promised to do. You're in love with Jim Trevor, hmm? 
I thought so. He, he's a beast. Try and forget him. It's going to hurt an awful lot for an awful long time if you don't. I feel sorry for Mike, too. Oh, I, I'll give every penny back to him. I'll get a job. I'll do any kind of work. Oh, sure. We'll make a deal with him to pay him back so much a week. To keep him from going crazy. So it's all over but the shouting. Well, that's life. You take a chance and draw a blank. It's finally got him. Who, me? No, I'm a gambler. So I lose. So what? Do I lose my life? Do I lose my health? Do I lose my good looks? No, I just lose my money. <laughs> and after all, what's money? <laughs> oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> it's a good thing they don't have pockets and straight jackets. Now, look, I... I think I'd better go to see Bill Duncan and tell him. Well, why is he Bill Duncan? That's finished. Bury it. But Forget all about Bill Duncan. I just saw him. He understands everything. Oh, yes. He's a very understanding man. Very. Now, you go back to France and marry somebody you love. But I can't. Well, why not? She can't swim that far. Oh, well, we spent so much money already, we might as well spend a little bit more. Here is $100, the boat sails at noon, and you keep the change. Oh, oh, Mike. You know, something tells me I'm going in the restaurant business myself. Wrigley. Jim. Now, Bill, wait a minute. Before we do now anything listen. rash, let's just count ten, shall we? Jim, One, you're the greatest two, palatel I've ever had. Listen, I can explain everything. Uncle Eric called Paris last night, and everything you suspect is true. The girl is a phony. If I'd married her, my family would have cut me off without a dime. Then you don't want to marry her? Marry her! I had to give that waiter five thousand dollars. He put up the money for the whole thing. You're not going to marry her, then? And it'll cost you more than that. You kidnapped her. Oh, she's got you good. They'll probably take you for a hundred thousand dollars. Are you sure you don't want to marry her? Oh, forget the marriage business. And don't worry about the money. I'll pay it. You don't have to. Wrigley. Yes, sir? Another suit, quick. Where are you going? I'm going to marry her myself. Do you think that'll be cheaper? I'll let you know in about ten years. Yes, but... What? Wait a minute! I must stop him. He's my best friend. He doesn't know what Before I know. Before you do this, sir, let me tell you of an incident in which my second cousin, One-Eye Wrigley, was involved. <laughs> after her. Yeah. What? On the regular dollar dinner at a new restaurant, the frog's legs will always be called a la cortillon. Don't forget to name the mashed potatoes after me. <laughs> Mr. Cortillon? Yes? Will you please follow me? But why? Is that your bag? Yes? I'll take it along. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I don't think you'll come back here. But I haven't done anything. In there. But I tell you, I've done nothing. You'll have to tell that to the captain, miss. I'm only carrying out orders. But now what happens? I don't know about that, miss. You have to speak to the captain. Perhaps, no? You are the certain Mademoiselle de Cortillon, no? Oh, please don't. Pardon? Don't make fun of me now. Oh, I wouldn't make fun of you. But why do you do all this? Well, you wouldn't want me to get married without changing my shirt, now, would you? Certainly, Wrigley's up there fixing it with the captain right now. In a few minutes, you're going to be the uncertain Mrs. James Trevor. But don't you think I'm very bad? I'll tell you a little secret. I'm pretty bad myself. The captain says he'll marry you in 15 minutes. Oh. I'll try and hurry him up, sir. <laughs> 